I planned a home birth and ended up with a hospital transfer. From the outside, I think my experience could have looked traumatic of four days of labor, but it was a magical adventure and I wish it for all women. My name is Liz Susong and I am a miraculous mama. Hey everyone, welcome back to Miraculous Mamas. Thank you, Liz Susong, for telling us why you're a miraculous mama. Don't forget to head over to the Patreon if you want to check out her birth story and a lot of women from our community, uh, their birth stories that they've been sharing with us. And I've just been blown away. I feel like it's so crazy because you want to share your story for other people who have been there and you relate to different aspects. But every story that I've heard has been so different and so unique. And each experience has just been beautiful. And these mamas have struggled. They've triumphed. They've, man, just overcome so, so much. So I'm so grateful for them for taking the time to, you know, come on and, and share and, um, and be able to connect with the other women in the community that way. Uh, For those of you who are just tuning in, Miraculous Mamas is a podcast that believes in empowering women through education and storytelling. So we love bringing women on to share their stories of a lot of motherhood stories and journeys and parenthood and trying to conceive, but also just of being a woman and what it's like um, overcoming your insecurities and learning to pursue your passions and live with passion and be the woman that you're created to be. And I'm, and the women that come on here are just so, so awesome. And I love bringing on the experts too, who are able to help us all learn and grow and take the parts of it that fit for us into our lives and to, um, and use that and grow from it and become better women. Uh, today I have an awesome episode for you guys. I'm Seriously, so excited. I have Tara Jolay on, and you guys might know her from Little Women LA, from Dancing with the Stars. She's done tons and tons of things, and this is definitely a story of overcoming. This girl has worked her butt off to be where she is today, and she still just is going at it and balancing so many different hats on top of that, being a wife and a mom of two and just this businesswoman, and she's so much fun. She she leaves so many... like. I was recording this episode with her. I was taking so many notes. You guys should see my page. I, everything she was saying, I was just writing down because it's just gold. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such an amazing quote. That's an amazing quote. She's just so much fun. And um, I cannot wait for you guys to hear what she has to say. So I'm going to get her on. All right, everyone. I am super excited about our guest today. I have Tara Jolay here with us and you may have seen her on TV. You may have heard her album. You may have read her book. You've probably just heard her or seen her somewhere because this lady is all over the place and she's very inspiring. She's overcome a lot of adversity in her life and she always does it with a smile on her face. So thank you so much for being here, Tara. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be on your show. Yeah, we're so honored to have you. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, My name is Tara Jolay, and I am the on-screen talent as well as executive producer of Little Women. Um, Little Women LA, I've hosted and um, executive producer of all of the other franchises as well. Um, But honestly... My most, I, I guess my biggest achievement in life, I, I know it's so cheesy to say, but it, it truly is being a mom. I feel like that's been like the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. And um, I hear you're a new dog mom, so you totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, it's it's been quite the journey. Um, my son actually turns, I guess I'm also thinking about it twice as much today because my son, he's my youngest and he turns three tomorrow and oh I am gosh. tripping balls. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. How I sweet. can't believe it. How, yeah. And your other one is four? She's four, yeah, and uh, it's just crazy seeing the two of them so much bigger than they once were. (laughs) (laughs) That's how it happens, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely how it happens. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. I I love that you said that your biggest achievement is being a mom. I mean, it's, it's one of the most powerful things that you can do in your life is bring another life into this world and raise them and 
you know, it definitely serves as a mirror to yourself trying to parent. Totally. I, it's like you try and do all of these things that maybe your parents didn't do and <laughs> and then you already see where you're screwing up in life yeah. and you're like, oh, I'm going to pay for that later. <laughs> right. Yeah. I watched a video of you um, bribing Penny with poppets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was so cute though. I'm surprised she wasn't scared. Um, for everyone listening, the poppets, the fireworks that you throw down and they snap and like make a pop sound. Um, I'm they surprised. look like little miniature like sperm. They do. They do. <laughs> or giant sperm actually. Giant. Yes, exactly. Super uh, giant sperm. Uh, Anyways. I'm surprised that they didn't scare her. Yeah, you know, I think she saw her older cousin doing them first, and so all of a sudden she had like a newfound confidence. Mm-hmm. And her cousin's eight, so she was like, "Oh, well, if she can do it, I can do it." Kind of energy. Yeah. And ever since then, she's been addicted to them, and she thinks it's hilarious. Like when somebody gets scared, she's the child that like loves the torture aspect, which oh is gosh. scary. <laughs> I know she's like watching all of my old school um, cartoons like Tom and Jerry Mm -hmm. and, you know, all of those things. And she thinks they're like the funniest thing when they get like set on fire. I'm like, what were we watching back then? (laughs) Anyways. Right. You don't realize that till later you go back and you watch things and it's like, what? (laughs) Yeah. They're like putting out cigarettes on cats' faces and I mean, horrible things. And I'm like... (laughs) children we were submitted i mean like totally watching this as a child but Mm -hmm. anyways but then again we never were like oh let's put a cigarette out on a cat's face (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) we turned out okay (laughs) yeah we turned out just fine Um, exactly she has the cutest curly hair where does she get that from it's a good question my husband asked the same thing Um, no, my husband's brother has super curly hair. So it is a genetic thing. It runs in the family. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say my brother, but he was adopted. So there's that because yeah. <laughs> they have like identical hair, which is ironic. But, um, yeah, so it does run in the Nafo family, but, um, I have basically bone straight hair. I wish I had curly hair like she did, th- yeah. like she does. Mm-hmm. Same. My hair is so straight and so is my husband. So we're like, maybe. Everybody wants what they don't have. It's true. That is really true. Because everyone you know with curly hair is like, oh my gosh, I would kill for straight hair. <laughs> yeah. And she like has so many tangles with curly hair. Mm-hmm. It tangles so easily. So I'm sure she would already, you know, like prefer it to be straight. Yeah. So that you're not brushing all those tangles out. Right. But I haven't put like a flat iron or anything. I don't want to. I just, I love it. I just, I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah, that is so, that's so cute. So um, as I was saying at the beginning, you've done reality TV. You did an album for your daughter, which now you're working on an album for your son, right? Totally. Um, We're actually doing pieces of it. Um, You'll see a little bit of it on this season of Little Women LA, which happens to be every Thursday starting at 9, 8 Central on Lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so, and I actually have a special guest that is going to be appearing on the album, and I can't wait to share that. But it's going to be special. I think it's going to be a unique album. It's going to be a holiday album. Oh, fun. And, um, yeah, I mean, what other songs do you love singing other than Christmas songs? So, Oh, my gosh. I love great. Christmas music so much. It is, I know how people are like, oh, my gosh, this place is already playing Christmas music. I'm like, yes, I could listen to Christmas music. I mean, basically October to March. <laughs> You and I both. I used to do a show called Radio City Christmas Spectacular Mm -hmm. starring the Rockettes. Yeah. I was like a principal character. I did an elf and I did other character scenes in there. But we start rehearsal usually October 1st. And so for three months straight, you're just like shoved with Christmas holiday music. Mm. And you, it just, for me, when I stopped doing it, I was like, it doesn't feel like Christmas. Right. I know. That sounds <laughs> like a dream. <laughs> 10 plus years. I know. Um, I've yeah. been trying, I've been telling my husband because every Christmas they have a big cousins party. He has tons of cousins that live in the area and we get together and wear ugly sweaters and do a gift exchange. And I'm like, we need to do a Christmas in July party every year. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. I know. You could have like an elephant party or Mm -hmm. I had like um, 
I had a, a tacky party and everybody had to bring the tackiest gift they could possibly think of yes. and wear the tackiest outfit. And there were awards for both. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. <laughs> so on board with that. And since like we moved into the house this year and we've just found so many random things that I, I'm like, I don't want to give it away. I want to save it for a like, white elephant gift exchange. So I have a pile of things like that's just awesome. waiting. So everyone invite me to white elephant gift I parties this Christmas because I, I got some fun things. This episode is brought to you by Love Every. That's L-O-V-E-V-E-R-Y. Love Every is an award-winning children's playtime company that's reimagining what kids' toys can be. Love Every play products are science-backed and distilled to their simplest, purest purpose, to be exactly what the children need and want at each stage of their development, which is so cool. The network structure of your baby's brain is formed in its very first years. So the more you expose your baby to early development exercises, the richer these neural networks will become. Love Every products are designed by child development experts to foster cognitive development during this important time to make it easy for modern parents to give their kids the best possible start in life. Love Every is a parent-run company and they've done the research so that you don't have to. Love Every offers a subscription box service, which consists of play kits. Um, and Love Every's play kits are beautifully designed and carefully curated with the best science-backed, eco-friendly, and non-toxic toys that your baby or toddler will benefit from and love to play with. And all of Love Every's toys are also ASTM F963 compliant and safe for teething and mouthing babies. Each kit is designed to foster development at a specific stage in your child's young health, building their physical, cognitive, visual, and motor skills on schedule as they grow. The play kit starts at 0 to 12 weeks and continues all the way up to 24 months. Taking your child from basic visual and sensory experiences to early stages of vocabulary, imagination, and problem solving. I love it because it makes an awesome gift. I actually have three of my closest friends who are pregnant right now and signing them up for a subscription as a gift for the baby shower has just been a really cool thing for me because I know that every uh, few months that they're going to get a box of things for their kids that they need and that it's going to help them develop. And it's a gift that kind of keeps on giving and that I feel really good being able to give the people in my life. Love Every's Play Kits were named one of the best inventions of 2018 by Time Magazine and experts agree this is the smarter way to engage your child and make playtime meaningful, which is so important. And we've got a deal for our listeners right now. Love Every is offering our listeners $15 off new Play Kit subscriptions. And if you're like me, you're going to want your child to have all of them. I'm definitely, I went on the website because I ordered one of the kits just to see what it was about. And, um, so I went on the website to see all the different ones and I was like, oh my gosh, I, it's kind of giving me baby fever <laughs> so that I can, uh, start the subscription because it's really, really cool what they are doing and what this company is about. So this offer is only available for a limited time. And only when you visit loveevery.com slash babies and use our code babies at the checkout, that's L O V E V E R Y dot com slash babies to check out all of the incredible play kits that Love Every offers, and you'll save fifteen dollars off your subscription with our special code babies. We thank Love Every for sponsoring the podcast, and remember that when you support our sponsors, you help make this podcast possible. Um, so you also, I mean, you now, I mean, well, you're an author and a producer. Yeah, it's a lot of like. I mean, it's a nonstop job. Everywhere you look, there's more work. And I'm looking right now, um, I've been working a lot and pitching more. So I'm hoping to actually um, be behind a couple of shows coming up that um, don't actually involve little people. But mm-hmm. I'm really proud of being on the behind the scenes side of things. Yeah. How did you end up getting into all of that? Um, nobody was giving me work. That's Mm. the honest to God's truth. It's the same thing that I did when I created mini Brittany. I was not, I wasn't being offered roles that I was happy with and I wanted to sing for a living. And so at that time, that was my main goal. I wanted like singing or entertaining was what I wanted to do for a living. And I, to this day, I love doing that. But of course, having children, your energy shifts. 
And um, so when I created Mini Britney, that really showed me that I could do anything I wanted to if I believed in myself and I believed that it could be possible. And I know that sounds really cliche and all of that jazz, but so many people say, I want to do this and they don't do anything to achieve that. Mm -hmm. And um, I took photos on my own. I think I went to like a JCPenney studio (laughs) and and, uh, and then I like mass mailed them out to every bar and club in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I spent about 300 bucks and one call came in and from that one call, it just kind of dominoed and it just takes that one person to believe in you. And then after that, I was on the Chelsea Handler show as mini Brittany. I did, I mean, I was on so many different shows, CSI, uh, Las Vegas. I I mean, so many different television shows and it just gave me the strength to say, okay, well, what else can I do? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to impersonate the rest of my life. And I think that that was when um, I was really thinking about like, okay, well, my friends are crazy. They're just as crazy <laughs> as these housewives. <laughs> yeah. So let's see what happens if I try and pitching this, you know, like, and it was something I, I really was very unfamiliar with. I've become way more familiar with how to pitch now. Um, but that's basically how it all started. And you just have to have that vision and then figure out the steps that it takes to achieve that vision. Mm. And it doesn't always work out. I threw a lot of spaghetti at the wall and you know, like <laughs> some, <laughs> not all of it stuck, but right. sometimes it does. And you just got to go with the flow. Yeah. Wow. I love that analogy. At first, I thought you actually threw spaghetti at the wall. Like you were frustrated. <laughs> then you're like, and it didn't always stick. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. No, I didn't throw any spaghetti. It's just, <laughs> just a phrase. Um, I probably screwed it up, but that's okay. No, Anyways. no. I, I mean, you are a true example of all those quotes that you hear that it's like, pave your own path. Right. If there's something that you dream or you want to do, you have to do it. Like nobody's going to hand you your dreams for the most part into your lap. Like you have to go for it. And you're such an example of thank you not giving up and actually being like, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to mail out this all over the country. I'm going to see, you know, and just rolling with it and keep going. And that is super inspiring. I know I've given up on so many dreams throughout my life, but also my dreams have changed you know, over totally the last, I'm in my early thirties now. And what I wanted to do 10 years ago is not at all what I want to do now, but, right. um, but I never, I never really followed a lot through. And so when right. I talk to people who did, it's just super inspiring to me because there's still things now that, that I want to achieve. And so just hearing you talk about it always, helps me put a little pep in my step, you know, cause it's like, no, you just have to go for it. And you did. And I'm like, okay, so people can do it. <laughs> yeah. And there's like another thing people always feel like, okay, well, I'm too old to do mm. this in life and yeah. I'm too old to, and you're, you're never too old. You're just too scared. Mm. And, and that's like what I truly feel about people's mentality nowadays. Yeah. And it, you may not achieve the exact goal that you want. If you want to be a basketball player, you may not be a basketball <laughs> player, but maybe maybe you're an assistant coach somewhere. You know what I mean? Like right. you, you, you may not achieve the exact goal, but you'll be amazed at where you'll get to if you even attempt to like try. Mm-hmm. Um, trying is the hardest part. Because you'll get, and, and if you're not okay with no's, then you need to be working for somebody else. Right. But if you're okay with the word no, then you can achieve almost anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because the word no, I feel like it's not a hard stop. It's this, right. this just isn't your opportunity or maybe not this time. Right. Or this partnership wasn't meant to be, but maybe your next door neighbors was, you know, like mm-hmm. who knows? I mean, yeah. that's a, a clear t- tail sign of pitching, um, like not every production company or not every network is going to want your show. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want your show and you still believe in your show, just keep, you know, next there is another door. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Um, Well, all these things that you've achieved. um, I mean, on top of that, you're a crazy adventurer. You, I saw the video of you skydiving. And then what was that snake on your face? You had a snake on your face. On my face? Oh, um, it was like around my neck. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. I, th- I think that was at a Steve Irwin gala. Um, yeah, th- they had these amazing animals at the Steve Irwin gala and it was, um, 
they they actually at the gala everybody's like in you know black and white and like formal gowns and like everybody's holding like snakes and lizards and wow. tarantulas and alligators <laughs> all kinds of stuff it was a lot of fun that yeah. was a few years ago i just saw a clip of it looked like the snake was kind of like on your face i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> yeah you know in the wild i'm scared to death of um <laughs> snakes and you know large spiders and things like that mm-hmm. but um if 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 like bendy Irwin hands me a snake then i'm like <laughs> oh my gosh it's so cute <laughs> right right no for sure um <laughs> that's so funny well, out of so out of all this stuff that you've done, I mean, you've accomplished a lot. You said that being a mom has been your biggest achievement. So let's dive into that a little bit. Awesome. Um, so you had, I mean, Penelope's four. Well, you call her Penny, right? Both. We call her everything. Pen, Penny, Penelope. Yeah. Uh, I love the name Penelope. Thank you. Um, so what was it like kind of starting from the beginning, finding out that you're pregnant and knowing that you're going to bring a baby into this world? Um, originally Joe and I didn't necessarily plan to have a child. It Mm -hmm. just kind of happened. We had been together for about seven years at that time. Mm -hmm. And, um, when it happened, we felt like, okay, well, we're at a good place in our lives. We can take, we can, we can handle this together. Mm -hmm. And, um, everything was like, I, uh, first off, there's lots of things that first time, first time moms, like take for granted. They feel like they can eat everything. That's a bad idea. (laughs) I gained half of my body weight through my first pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I like started at 90, like I was right around 90, 95 pounds. And then I went up to 140, 145, somewhere around there, which is insane for a girl that's four foot two, in my opinion. (laughs) And, um, And, um, so that is, so just the weight first off was really difficult for me. Um, my feet, you know, every, all the pregnancy issues, my feet were swollen the whole nine yards, but the most difficult issue was, um, around the beginning of my last trimester. And we, we knew that she was little, we could tell by the circumference of her head. We knew she had achondroplasia. We didn't yet know if she had pseudoachondroplasia, um, which would actually mean that she takes on the gene from my husband and from me. We're different types of dwarfism. Mm-hmm. Um, but she ended up only taking mine. And uh, that wasn't like we didn't find that out until after because no matter what, it doesn't. it's not a fatal situation when it comes to two different types of or our two different types of um, dwarfism. So no, we were going to keep the pregnancy no matter what. It wasn't like this was, um, a second thought for us, mm-hmm. but, um, I didn't want to do any CVS testing or amnio testing because there still was a chance of a miscarriage. And I was very paranoid about that. I don't judge anyone that has them done. I think that they're very smart in a lot of cases, but for me, I was, um, no matter what I wanted to keep the pregnancy. So, um, then in the beginning of my last trimester, they were like, well, there's like fluid building up around her brain and we just want to look into it a little bit further. And it's pretty common within achondroplasia to have fluid around your brain, but um, hers was a bit excessive. And so um, I had MRIs done and I was pregnant with her. And um, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been in an MRI machine, but it's one of the craziest experiences, especially when you can't move and you're pregnant and Mm -hmm. you have to stay in the same position for an hour. And it's like, welcome to hell brought to you by this tube, (laughs) but you want to do anything to try and like figure out what's going on with your child. Yeah. And so Joe and I both like knew that we were facing at that point, um, a child with achondroplasia, possibly double dominant, but of a child with achondroplasia that also had hydrocephalus. And that was the one thing that I was not familiar with. Like, I didn't know necessarily what hydrocephalus was. I didn't, like, my girlfriend Tanya said, oh, yeah, I got a shunt put in when I was 12 and I was fine. And so I, I almost, like, I almost took it for granted, to be honest. I almost, like, didn't even really research it as much as I should have. I didn't really look into it as much as I should have. But I just felt like, oh, she's going to be fine. She's not going to need a shunt. She'll just get a decompression surgery one day maybe and she'll be good to go. 
And then around four months, they were like, we need to do a decompression surgery because the fluid's building up. And I, they said it may relieve some of the pressure. There's no, you know, like we don't have it scientifically proven. Fast forwarding, uh, I wasn't comfortable at four months to have that surgery. I, I just wasn't ready as a mom. Mm-hmm. And at seven months, we had the decompression surgery. And that was her first, technically, I believe that was like her first surgery leading up to um, helping her hydrocephalus. And um, around three years old uh, of 2008, like May of 2018, she was squinting constantly. And looking at you, it almost looked like she had a, like a, like a tick. Like she was just, she couldn't stop squinting. Mm-hmm. And so we took her a, a, to have her eyes checked and the fluid that was on her brain was putting pressure on the nerves on her eyes. And when we went back to her neurologist, he basically said like, it's only going to get worse. We should, we should put a shunt in. And within less than two weeks later, we were putting a shunt in and I was scared, Mm -hmm. scared to death because this was a different kind of shunt than my girlfriend Tanya had. This was a programmable shunt and she couldn't have cell phones around her. She couldn't have magnets around her. She couldn't have all of these things that could reprogram this shunt that, that were like common everyday devices that we use. And, um, oh my gosh, it was just... 2018 was like the har- probably the hardest year of mothering for me um, because of all of the crazy experiences. And two months, I knew that like I, I had read all of these horror stories about mm. their children not living normal lives if they have hydrocephalus and some of them like even dying and like horrible like I there were people that had like over a hundred surgeries revisions and they were only like 20 over a hundred um there was there were people praying like I just hope that my daughter or my son turns older like has more years in their life than surgeries Mm -hmm. you know and I'm like I don't want this life for my daughter like I, I never expected this we were totally prepared for dwarfism, we were not prepared for hydrocephalus. But I will say that um, one of the scariest statistics was um, in the first two years, 50% of all shunts fail. Mm. And I thought, I thought like 50%, like that's not like, that's like one out of two, you know, and I'm thinking in my head, like, am I that one out of two? And um, sure enough, two months later, we ended up having to do a revision. And it was just like, I was like, okay, so are we going to be in the hospital every two months? Like at that time, I was like, is this, is this going to be a thing? I mean, brain surgery every two months. Mm-hmm. That was like where my mind was. And it was very depressing and very disheartening because I, I felt like she's being gypped like valuable time in her life. And um, I knew she wasn't walking. And that was what the neurologist said is because it's the, the fluid on her brain is really affecting her ability to be able to walk. It, you know, it, your brain controls your entire body. And so that was all of us just wanted to see her have a better life. Mm-hmm. And we just made the decisions we felt were right for Penelope. Um, but anyway, so I know that's a super depressing adventure. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, if you went through a lot. That sounds extremely hard, especially being your first experience of motherhood. Yeah, it was definitely different. Um, and poor Grayson. Grayson is like, when I had... Um, let me just, for Penelope, I will say she's she's like done strides. She is doing so much better. She's walking. She's like trying to not hang on to me anymore, which never even she never attempted to walk w- before her hydrocephalus surgery, before her shunt surgery. So the fact that now she's not only trying to walk, but she's walking. It's just, you can tell that she's still trying to put all the pieces together. She's still trying to make sure, okay, left foot, right foot. And then she may need to reach out for your hands. She's talking 
like nonstop, which I'm so grateful for because that was another thing that we were way behind in speech and um, everything has really drastically improved after the shunt surgery. But with my son, it was like night and day. I was like, okay, I'm not going to gain any weight. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to do any of that. And, uh, (laughs) and, and he honestly was a much easier birthing story. I got to like hold him the same day that I had him. Penelope was in the NICU for, um, I think like 24 hours before I could even put her in my arms. It mm-hmm. was like, it was such a rough thing because you want to be able to be with your child after your child's born. And I don't know, it was just, I can't say that I would wish that upon any mother. Mm-hmm. And I know that in the end, I mean, like it was only one day that I couldn't be with her. A lot of mothers can't, you know, hold their their newborns for a few days because they're so fragile in the NICU. And so at least I was able to be with her. And um, only after a few days was she let go out of the NICU, which was a blessing. I was able to leave the hospital with her and everything. Grayson, on the other hand, the first night he was already in my room sleeping with me. You know, like Mm -hmm. we have as little people, um, our pelvic bone is shaped a different way or for achondroplasia. I can't speak for all little people, but Acons definitely need to have a C-section because we have um, like our, we have a lower dosis and it kind of rearranges some of um, the things in our lower half, which makes it difficult for a baby to leave our birthing canal. So we always have to have a C-section and um, Grayson was like easy as pie, even though I had to have a Mm C-section. It was like no big deal. (laughs) Yeah. So, Did you have to schedule it at a certain time so that you wouldn't spontaneously go into labor? Yes. Both of them were scheduled at a certain time. Um, I knew, so right before I had Grayson, I was told that um, I was going to be doing Dancing with the Stars. Ooh. Like I would say within two weeks. And um they were like, so about your scheduling, um, do, like, if you, can you schedule that any day? Could you do it a week earlier? I'm like, if I schedule him a week earlier, he's a preemie. That's not going to happen. We need to bake this baby as long as possible. Yeah. And, but I, I was, the, the biggest fear that I had with Grayson was that I had to dance two weeks after having him. Right. And I didn't know if I was going to be fully recovered because I had this C-section. And then I don't know if you've ever had like a lower abdominal surgery, but you can't basically walk the first week. And then the second week you're like, okay, I can walk, but I can't like run. And how am I going to dance on the third week? (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, you're supposed to by doctors like six weeks recovery. Totally. Six to eight weeks for a C-section is Mm -hmm. what we're told. And I asked, I had to ask my OBGYN, I was like, is this, am I going to put harm to myself? Is this safe? And he said, honestly, Tara, he's like, I don't know. I've never had somebody ask if they could join a dance competition. (laughs) What? He (laughs) hasn't? That's so weird. (laughs) And he, he said, but you will know your body and your body will tell you when you're pushing yourself and you're... Um, incision will also tell you, like, if you're bleeding through your incision, you need Mm. to stop dancing. You know, these kinds of signs that you need to look out for. So he gave me all of the signs that I needed to look for. And um, that was actually super helpful. And about, I mean, ironically, it didn't hurt. And I don't know why it didn't hurt. But because of all of the dancing, I I gained three hernias and I ripped my diastasis, which is, it's not... It's not even ripping my diastasis. So after your, preg- your your pregnancy muscles kind of separate when you have a baby. But then when you um, have the baby, the pregnancy muscles are supposed to come back. But because I didn't heal before that happened, they never came back together. So you could stick your hand like in my stomach and you couldn't even see your hand. It was like surrounded oh my by gosh. my skin, which is so crazy. Yeah. So we sewed my diastasis back up and shoved my hernias back in oh my gosh (laughs) and yeah and we were good and that was probably the hardest thing and that was 
after dancing. That was about six weeks after I left the competition, which I made it every, all, every single week, which I'm very grateful for, all 12 weeks. Yeah. Such an experience. Anyway, so that's me talking your ear off. <laughs> no, I love it. I have so many questions now. Um, so, I mean, you were, were you dancing with hernias? Yes. And like the first, we saw one and then Sasha was very concerned and they have um, a doctor for Dancing with the Stars and he, he came to look and um, he asked me if it hurt and I said no. And he said, you know, like it may get worse as you're dancing, but do you want to continue? And I said, yes, you know, like I've made it this far. I don't want to stop. And then I got a second one. No. and. <laughs> And he recommended then that I like I never dance without a some kind of support. Yeah. So they started putting um, girdles and things like that in my dance outfits just so that I could kind of keep it together. And then during rehearsal, I would wear I would always have to wear the um, stomach supports. And um, <laughs> and then I got a third one. <laughs> oh my goodness, your body's like hello. But, <laughs> yeah, but the third one didn't come until the very last week. And okay. I was just like, let's push through. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't, you know, like I was not about to leave. And it was just, it was really weird. It looked like little pencil erasers sticking through your body. I can't explain what it looked like, but it was very uh, bizarre. Yeah. I mean, again, just your determination and will to to go forward is so powerful. Thank you. Uh, how, I think if it was painful, I would probably have to step out of the yeah, competition because yeah. I, I would know that my body's telling me something's wrong. Yeah. But it didn't hurt. And so I just was like, okay, let's keep going. Yeah. Yeah. How was that doing the competition? So you already talked about like post C-section, but also now with two little kids, a newborn and having to do all these practices and being on a show. What was that like? So at the time it was the busiest time of my life because not only was I on Dancing with the Stars at that time, but I was also doing Little Women Mm -hmm. and having a newborn at the same time. I was up every two hours breastfeeding. I had breastfed him until he was three months. And even during rehearsals, every two hours I was in the bathroom pumping and Sasha Sasha was totally like a a virgin to all of this. He's like, you have to (laughs) what? (laughs) You got to do what, when? (laughs) And he was very understanding and he was like, okay, two hour break. And, um, I, my boobs leaked on him at times and he was still very understanding. (laughs) But you can't, I mean, you're, you're in that close environment with someone where you're, um, you know, your bodies are contacting each other. And so, Hey, it's, it's just, this is life and this is my life. So, yeah. but it was, it was honestly a lot of fun. It was just very stressful because a part of me felt like I gypped Grayson of his like life as a newborn because the first two months of, or three months actually, I was dancing and it, my schedule only got heavier as I progressed in the competition. And then, um, but now I feel like, okay, well, time to make up for all of that missed time. And, uh, you know, you're able to give them medical insurance and you're able to give them, you know, like a, a padding on their college education and, yeah. you know, help their future. So right, and that's what it's all about. And how cool is it that he's going to be able to look back and see those videos of you dancing? He'll be like, oh my gosh, you just gave birth to me and you're doing this? <laughs> like, <laughs> I hope he says that. <laughs> If not, Instead have him of, call me. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That I mean, that's such a cool experience. And Thanks, um, Liz. yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine. How long were those practices? Um, in the beginning, they were basically like six hours per day, oh my gosh. and then towards the end, it, it was usually closer to like twelve to fourteen. I was leaving around six a.m. and coming back around nine p.m. Oh my it goodness. Was, yeah, it was insane because you, I mean, you'll look at the show and as you progress, you're doing dance numbers with other, with other groups. You're doing like the intro of the show. And so you, you have rehearsals for all of that on top of your rehearsal with your partner. And then you're doing multiple songs with your partner. And so everything it just 
it progresses and grows and you have to do costume fittings. You have to, and there's so many different little ins and outs that you need to have for this national show. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, you do watch it and you're like, how do they make these people dance so well? And it's like, they literally just practiced hours and hours and hours. (laughs) And hours. Yeah. And and hours. Yeah. Uh, So how do you, I mean, now you're still doing tons of different things and being a mom and you have time, you have your mini mama YouTube series and how do you find balance in it all? Um, honestly, the big, the easiest thing is having good help Mm -hmm. and, um, like right now we're down for little women. And so making these moments count, I mean, making, you know, the time that you are, and I feel like that's like a schedule, like keeping a good schedule is also very helpful. And even, even then, like, I'm still trying to find my flow in life because I feel like every day it changes so drastically. So it's hard to have everybody that's like, well, what's your schedule? Like, I'm like on which day <laughs> <laughs> it just depends, you know, every, every day is so drastically different, but I try and, you know, to have that child time and I try and have that husband time and I try and have that me time which I feel are all very important just to be able to like have success in your life and have confidence in your day-to-day activities because it gets stressful, very stressful, very easy. As you know, I mean, that's just juggling life. And I think everybody kind of deals with the exact same thing. They're like, well, how do I make time for all of this? And you just kind of have to figure it out. I mean, it may not be the same as Sally Joe, but you know, I'm, nobody's life is the same. Right. No, absolutely. And, and so you've been married now for four years. Uh, yep. We've been married for four years. We've been together for 10. Crazy. (laughs) So what did you think that marriage was different than dating? Was there a switch at all that kind of happened when you decided to get married or was it like, Oh, it's still the same. Um, I thought like on Honestly, I thought that it would be um, kind of different. Like I thought, okay, well, after we had Penelope, I was like, I want to feel like family. Mm -hmm. And I didn't technically feel like I was 100% connected. And so I wanted to feel that like connection. And I feel like after um, having been married... I was like, okay, nothing will be the same. I mean, everything will be the same, but it, it, it really changed our bond. It changed everything. I felt completely different. I love being able to call him my husband. I love being able to call Joe. Like I loved going through the fiance stage, you know, like, and it was, it was everything that I never thought it was. I, as weird as that sounds, I never thought I would be married. Honestly, I thought we would be like Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. But I will say that after being married to Joe, it it just it signifies your bond and it signifies how strong you are together. And you do anything for your family. Yeah. It's like you're a team. You're not just like boyfriend girlfriend anymore. Right. Yeah. So after these four years of marriage now, do you have any marriage advice for the listeners? Um, Always make time for each other. That's probably number one because I think a lot of people don't. And like even if it's 20 minutes a day, like sitting down and talking to your loved one or like something new that Joe and I started was date night. And I think that like um, like last night we've been... We try to do at least one date night a week where we have time without the children, just us. And I think that really improves a relationship. And it, you know, like you had children because you loved one another so much, you know, it wasn't because you hated each other. Mm-hmm. So it really lets you kind of like feel that energy again. And um, I think it's really important to kind of keep that alive. And if it means just like 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, whether it's like sexy time or just having a really deep conversation or maybe eating a meal together, I think it's important that you, especially in the beginning of the marriage, that you have that open communication where you're still spending that personal time with one another. Yeah. And like spending intentional time with each other. 
intentional. That's the perfect word for it. Most certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Is that how you guys kind of keep it fresh now with two kids? Yes. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's always different. You know, every (laughs) week is different, but, um, we really do try and have that personal time together. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, It definitely is. It's super important to keep your partner, you know, as your forefront as well when adding kids because kids are so time consuming. They do take up a lot of your energy and time and space. Definitely. And really like, I mean, picking battles is a whole new thing. Like people yell at each other just because they're frustrated about their day, not because they actually hated the way you took out the trash. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just figuring out like what is worth a true argument versus what's not worth, you know, like having a, a bad day over. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. That's such good advice. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming on here and talking to us about your birth stories and motherhood and work and relationships. Uh, where can people find you at and follow you? Um, so people can follow me. My overall hashtag across the board is at Tara Jolet. Uh, my YouTube is minimama.com. And we actually have um, built a company called Girl Crew, C-R-U dot com. And it, I sell wine with my business partner and both bottles are really for great causes. Um, Mini Mama Moscato donates a portion of the proceeds to Hydrocephalus Association. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so proud that I'm doing so much more for Hydrocephalus. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's awesome that you give back. We love companies that give back to other causes and want to support that because it's just, it's so humbling and it's so nice seeing companies that want to, you know, they invest in putting this company together, but then they're also willing to invest in other causes and people. Definitely. I feel like at the end of the day, if you're not like believing in something, then nobody's going to believe in you. Mm. I love that. You you said so many good quotes. I was like writing down so many things. I'm like, okay, you're Aww. never too old. You're just too scared. <laughs> like I'm like writing all these quotes down. Um, well, thank you so much for being here. You guys, I'm going to have all of her information also on the Miraculous Mama's Instagram page, the Facebook page, and my personal account will put all of that up. Yeah. Don't forget to check her out. And thank you so much. And check out uh, Little Mamas. It's Thursday nights. Uh. That is awesome. Yours is Thursday nights. It's like all the little women are on Thursday nights. Thursday nights, little women. Um, Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on here. Thank you. Yeah. Man, I, I wish that she lived in Chicago and we were best friends because (laughs) it would be a purely selfish friendship because she's just so inspiring to talk to. And it's always good to have those people in your life who are continuing to grow, who are inspiring you, who are empowering you. And it's so important to surround yourself with those people. And that's one of the reasons I love this podcast because you get to hear from those people. So in a way you do get to connect. But um, I mean, she definitely inspired me to to just hold fast to my vision um, and to do what it takes to achieve it. And man, she's just a boss, man she's a boss. And, and I will have all the information up about her on the Miraculous Mama's Instagram page. I will post where you can find her, follow her um, there and in the Facebook group, the Miraculous Mama's Facebook group. If you are not following either of those, you're definitely going to want to join our community. They are amazing. The Facebook group is an awesome place to connect and grow and feel like you're not alone in this journey, whether you're trying to conceive or have kids or done having kids or thinking about having kids and not sure. Um, It's just a great place that women get to come together and support each other. Uh, In the Instagram page, I try to share as much inspirational and educational mom tips and things like that on there as well. Also on my website, elizabethjoy.co, I have mommy blogs. There's... um, I posted a blog. I know that we had talked about tips to prevent tearing before, and I wrote a whole blog on it. So if you're pregnant right now and you are scared (laughs) of tearing um, during delivery, I have a blog up there uh, with tips to help prevent 
that. Obviously, nothing's 100%, but there are active things that you can do to help prevent your body from um, or help aid your body in the labor delivery process. There's also um, a blog up there on sex and pregnancy. There's one on how to be cost effective during pregnancy and preparing for your kids, how to save money because it is no joke. The expenses are real. So I've heard, (laughs) but, um, yeah, I just love you guys so much and I appreciate you. And I'm so thankful that Tara took time out of her crazy schedule because this woman is nonstop to come on and to connect with us. So thank you so much, Tara. And I cannot wait to talk to you guys next week. Love you. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.